Hey folks, I'm Dennis. Thanks for watching my video. Today I went and bought a uh, Anderson 3000 series storm door for the front door on our house. The information that comes with it says that it's got a 45 minute install time. So I'm going to check that out today. In the process, I'll show you how I install the door. Uh, to be fair to Anderson, I'm going to open the box, get out the instructions and gather up all my tools first and then start my timing. So thanks for coming along with me and uh, let's get started. As you can see, it says cut above line and it's got that on either side so you can cut it on either edge. So what they do is they leave a little gap between the contents and uh, the top. In mine, it comes with two separate sets of instructions. One is uh, in color and it's in English and then the, there's a copied staple part inside of there that's some um, French and Spanish. So pick whichever one works for you. Now before you buy one of these you have to make sure that you have the right size. You got to measure the width and the height of your door. Um, like it shows here, like my door for example is 36 by 80. So I bought a 36 by 80 door. You also have to know which way you want the door to open, whether you want a left handed or a right handed door. So to determine which hand door you need, you put your back up against the hinge side of the door frame and whichever way the door opens, whichever hand it opens toward, that's the hand of the door. So for example, you put your back up against the hinge part of the door frame and if the door, if you want the door to open to the left from there, from your to your left, then it's a left hand door. If you want it to open towards your right, then it's a right hand door. So I read through the instructions, sort of, and uh, it doesn't tell you in the front every single tool that you're going to need. you got to kind of flip through. So that's what I did. So it tells me I need a drill and an eighth inch drill bit, which is right there, right there, a file, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a pair of gloves. So that's what I got. I'm not sure yet what those little vinyl trim pieces are for, but we'll find out. So you want to be careful with the screen because it's kind of fragile like screens are. That's the plastic clip that holds the screen and you just pull that out and pitch it. I apologize for the background noise. There's a guy in a little private airplane flying around doing acrobatics right over top of the house so you'll probably hear that as I go. There is a, there's an installation kit. It's got two cylinders and it's got all the screws and stuff that we need so that'll be handy. This is the top and this is the bottom and I can tell because of a couple of things. One there's an orange clip right here and they tell me in the instructions that's the bottom but also there's a flange on the top which is going to attach to the door frame and the bottom is kind of flat because it's got to set in the door in the uh, door sill. I did not thoroughly read the instructions before I got started. This is a bag of screws in the closer kit. They actually give you an eighth inch drill bit. So you don't have to round up your drill bits. So yeah, a little drill bit. All right, so to first get the uh, door in the door hole, the door opening, you need um, two of these one inch screws, which come in the same pack that the uh, drill bit came in. Put the drill bit in your drill and have it handy so you can reach it while you're holding the door in. Then I'm gonna take the door and we'll set it in the door frame. It tells you the third hole down from the top on each side to go ahead and drill and put the screws in. So I'm gonna do that next. Probably better take my wife's Christmas wreath off before I smash it. This is a surprise for her, so I'm trying to do it before she comes home. So first snag, my doorbell's in the way. I gotta pull the doorbell off and move it later. Okay, I unscrew the doorbell and uh, doorbell, and I'll just fix that later. I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna route the button. So what you want to do at this stage is you want to kind of make sure that the, the storm door is just centered and you can tell by looking at the brick mold on each side of the, the frame and make sure that, you're, that you've got the same amount on each side. That'll tell you that the 
storm door centered in the door because you don't want it to be cockeyed. It'll, it might bind up or it just won't sit right. And you also want to make sure that down here your storm door is sitting on that yellow, I mean that orange block. And you do one of a couple things. You can either slide that orange spacer at the bottom to the middle so that it kind of balances the door or you can just you know make sure you're holding it straight or shim it up from the bottom to hold it flat so you can get your holes right where you want them but you do want to make sure that it's square in the door and in the door casing so one two three I'm gonna do this side first I got mine balanced in there but you might have to hold it while you do this or have somebody else hold it for you now they don't say this but I'm not gonna snug those up yet I'm gonna do the other side you don't need to see that and uh, then I'm not gonna snug them up yet until I get further along with the installation. I'm gonna uh, go around the frame and I'm gonna drill holes and drive the screws all the way around the outer frame. So I'm using the uh, one inch screws. I did decide to go ahead and snug them up as I drive them because once you get two screws in there, it's not really going anywhere. The door's got these spacer clips on it, on the uh, handle side, the latch side, and it says to uh, pull them out towards you to get them out of the way because they're in the way of the screw holes. So, we're going to see how that works. What you do is you just pull them like this to unlatch them from the frame, and then you can get to the hole and drill it, but they're screwed into the door, so that part's got to come later. Getting that off's got to come later. Once you got all the uh, all the side screws in, it says to um, take a Phillips screwdriver, and there's there's two orange handle hole fasteners. It says remove them by inserting a Phillips screwdriver into the handle hole and firmly pressing them out. Grasp the edge of the door and pull the door open. Right. So, I guess I'm just pushing them out. Yep. And they fall to the bottom. They just push them out like that. And then you can take the door, you can open the door. So the door jam, or the hinge rail, is, it's the side where the, uh, where the hinges are. So, we're going to do more drilling and screwing. So I don't know how well you can see this, but there's there's two beads of weather stripping, uh, felt weather stripping. There's there's one that's attached to the hinge rail, and then there's one that's in this inner flange. The screw holes are right between those two. So there's two here, there's two further down. Um, there, basically, there's two holes at each hinge. There's four hinges on this door. So there's two holes, one above and one below each hinge. And it says to don't over tighten them, so just snug them up. All right, so two more right here. And then you just so on and so forth for each hinge. Okay, so I'm just gonna get the other two hinges. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with those details. Just drill, uh, drill and screw, and then uh, I'll go to the next step. In the closer kit, there are two of these little white plugs. Well, they're gonna match whatever color door you got. I bought a white door. Pull it away from, oh, well, that was easy. It just pulls out real easy. And then there's two holes right here. You take these little plugs and just pop them in there. And I'm gonna take the butt of my screwdriver and just drive them home being careful not to drive my screwdriver through my hand. There, that way they're not gonna come out. So we gotta take these clips out. It says don't use a drill because it'll be easy to strip them, I guess, because this is aluminum. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna loosen that up. If you can see that, yeah. Loosen that up just enough to slide that off. and then tighten it back up. 
and do the same one on the bottom. Then it says to pull the other spacer clip that's on the bottom uh, off. The, the one that was on the side here fell off, so it's fine. But you just grab them and pull them off. They're no big deal. So next we got to put in the lock set. This lock set goes with this door, so when you get your door, don't forget to get the lock set. It's part of the 45 minute easy install, which so far is going all right. I'm running out of daylight though, so. All right, so I got the, uh, I got the rubbed bronze. Um, so those are the back plates, obviously. There's a square hole and there's a notch in one side of the square hole. And the instructions say to make sure that that notch is facing down. Mine is not facing down, so it says to take the, the handle, spindle, stick it in there, turn it so it is. So now it's facing down. You probably can't see that in the camera, but there's just a little notch in one side of the, uh, of the, the hole. You have uh, two trim plates. One has the Anderson logo on it, one does not. The one that does have the Anderson logo is the outside trim plate. If you get rubbed bronze, rubbed oil bronze, I don't know, whatever it's called, it's got like film on it, so probably gonna wipe it off. I mean, I'll wipe it all down after I'm done anyway, but whatever. So then you take the, the handle that does not have the spindle on it, then you insert the handle into the trim plate like so and it says turn it 180 degrees to make sure it stays so okay then you take the other handle the one with the spindle on it and you take the inside trim plate which is the other one that's the one with the slider and you do the same thing you put it in the put it in the hole there's it's got three notches so put in the hole turn it 180 degrees we're going to take the door and we're going to have the handle vertically up. This little slider is on the, goes on the top. And we're going to put that into the hole. And then we're going to take this one, the outside one, same thing, hold it vertically up. Put it on the get it on the spindle line up the holes and put all that together so now it's kind of just pushed together if you can slide the whole thing together you got it because that little there's a on the back side of here where that slider is there's just a rectangular hole in the mechanism that's inside the door as long as that that rectangular rod that's on the back of that slider goes in there you're good so if they push together you got it made rotate the handles to a horizontal position so the screw kit that comes with the latch is this. There's two long pan heads. Look like that. Pan head is rounded, flat on the bottom of the head. So that's what we want. And they're going to go in from the back. And you're probably going to want to just use a screwdriver to put them in. Just make sure they thread up as you're, what you're doing is you're, you're screwing from the back into this front face plate. And so you got to go in there straight. And make sure you get it in the right hole and uh, it should thread up pretty easy but it's going to probably be a little difficult to get it in there you don't want to over tighten them because you'll bend everything but you want it to be snug okay so snug them both up and the latch should work which it does so this is the uh, the lock place, what do they call it? The lock case trim plate. So on the end of the door, it's still bare. So we've got the, the lock case trim plate, they call it. And uh, all right, so it's gonna go like that, I suppose. Obviously, it's got to go like this. Okay. So it goes like that. 
we're going to take the short screw, which is a 5 8 screw, put it in the top hole right here. Install the deadbolt key cylinder, which is this. It came in a separate little box. That's the deadbolt. So that's the one that we looked at earlier. That's an inch and a half, but it's got a flat head on it, which is kind of beveled. So we're going to, this is the inside, obviously, of the deadbolt latch because you want that on the inside. And it's got a screw hole in it here. So it's going to line up here. It goes in like, it's, it's keyhole shaped. Um, and so this is a keyhole. So it's going to go like that. Come out flush here. And then that screw hole in the lock set is going to line up in here when it's about halfway through. And you can just look through this hole and tell. So put that in there. Get that threaded. Tighten him up. Tighten this other one up. There. So kind of cool. It's not going to stop robbers, but they'll keep somebody from snatching your door open without you hearing about it. So just for kicks, I'm going to try it. Awesome. Works. That's a good sign. All right, up here. Uh, is the rain cap the top part of the storm door there's three holes there's one two and three when you look at them if you can see mounting surface in the entire hole then you want to drill them and put uh, one inch screws in them just like we did the side rails if you can't then you just plug them and uh, up there on the top if you couldn't put screws in there and you had to put plugs in it then this is a rain cap extender. And what you do is you, you install this above the door frame, the storm door frame, where you can get to uh, mounting material and then take your, your drill and, and drill and screw this in to cover over the top of the door. Um, that keeps rain from getting in between the, the door, your original door frame, the mounting surface, and the storm door frame. You don't want to have a gap up there. So this will cover it up if you need it, if you aren't able to put screws in up here. On mine, I can see them, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill them and put screws in them. So then my next step is to take this little piece, which is a screw cover. Basically, it covers up the screw heads, so you don't have to look at them. It makes it look nice. What you have is you got a short one that goes in the top, and then you've got two long ones that go down each side. So all you do is you take these. They're just, I don't know if you can really see that, but it's just a little rounded piece of vinyl. And you snap it into that channel where the screw heads are. That's the top one. And then you take the long pieces of vinyl trim and do the same on the sides. And word of advice, if you got that rub bronze finish on your lock set, wash your hands first because that coating that's on there will stain this vinyl. So it just kind of snaps in there. Just work your way down. Once you get it going, you can just start pressing it in there. This is the top of the door. There's these two uh, hard vinyl pieces that come with it. Now the instructions read like the, like the glass is not already in the door and the side retainers aren't already in the door. Mine are. The, the glass is in and the side retainers are in it. So I've just got to put in the, the top and the bottom retainers. And they both go in the same way. They just snap in um, the flat lip goes against the the door frame and then the kind of the contoured part goes against the glass 
so it just uh, they just snap in. So you just go down through there and pop it in. There's a there's a little channel um, right at the edge of the door mold frame, and there's a ridge on the back of this that pops in that channel. So you do that on the top and then do it on the bottom. Now down here at the bottom, you've got the sweep. And what it does is it seals um, the bottom of the storm door against your, your door seal. So if you look underneath there and you see daylight, then you need to probably need to adjust the seal down. So, or the sweep down. So all you have to do is loosen these up. It's one on each side. Slide the sweep down enough to where it seals. And then tighten the screws back up. And it may not even be like even on both sides, just depending on your, your door sill. Make sure you can't see daylight and you're good. Next thing we gotta do is put on the closers. There's one on the top, there's a closer on the top on this door and one on the bottom. I'm just gonna show you one because they're the same. In the closer kit, you get two closers. They're, that's the only difference between the two is that one of them's got the, uh, got the bump lock thing on it. Um, they say to put it on the bottom. I suppose you could put it on the top or the bottom. I'm going to put it on the bottom. Um, the other one's just plain, but uh, the installation kits are the same. You've got a uh, you got a bracket that goes on the door. You got a bracket that goes on the jam. You got the arm that snaps into that bracket. You got three two inch screws, a short and a long pin for the uh, closers a couple of short screws and a clip so um, i'm going to put the bottom closer on and um, the top is exactly the same all right you're going to take this bracket first and the two um, short screws and you'll put it on with you know with this side toward the hinges basically you just want to use the middle you want to use the middle um, slots. It's adjustable, but you want to use the hole in the middle in case you do have to adjust it. I wouldn't tighten them up with a driver. You just got to get the thread started. Tighten it up with a screwdriver. So now we're going to take this piece, and it's going to go up against a door jam like that. You want to line the top of it up with this part of the door. So I'm going to take my I'm going to take my pen. And mark about where I want it. And then you want it to go up as close to the frame of the aluminum, the storm door, as possible, like so. And then mark the mark the holes. You're going to drill the holes using the eighth inch bit that we've been using. You're going to use two inch screws so I go ahead and drill it kind of full depth of the of the bit and then you're going to take uh, two of the big screws and you're going to put them in the two back holes, the holes that are furthest away from the storm door. the uh, arm and it goes in with the um, slanted part toward the storm door so it's going to go in like like so and what it does is it's got it's got little latches here on the back of it so you're going to kind of rock that into this part of the of the this bracket we just installed and then we're going to roll it in there and then we're going to put the other two inch screw in here. That'll hold it all together. So just make sure it goes on the inside. Make sure you get the, the lips locked in back here. And then you can take that last screw and put it in the hole. And I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the, the, the locking one on the bottom. Well, that's what they recommend. Uh, you could probably put it either place. So it goes in like this with the with the button toward the door jam. 
You use, there's two pins come with it. There's a short one and a long one. The short pin goes here and the long pin goes here. That's because this part is not as thick as this part. So you need the short pin on this side. So all you do is you just line it up, drop the pin in there, no problem. And same thing with this one. Now you might have to, to put this pin in, you might have to pull the cylinder a little bit and you, you'll have to finagle it a touch. And then when you get the top one done, what you can do with these closers, the regular one, the plain one, it has a screw here to adjust the speed. You loosen it to make the door uh, close faster and you tighten it to make it close slower. And then this one's got a that little thumb wheel on its adjustment. But that's how you adjust the speed of the door if you need to. So I'll put the top one on and I'll be done. So all right, I got it all done. They say that the installation takes 45 minutes. It took me about an hour and 15 minutes from start to finish. Uh, in all fairness to them, part of that time was uh, wrapped up with um, recording, but not a whole lot. So I think 45 minutes is a bit of a push. If you have everything together and everything comes off without a hitch, the 45 minutes is accurate. But yeah, it took me about an hour and a quarter, thereabouts, hour and 15 minutes to get it done. But it went in super easy. It's a, it's a good door. It, uh, it operates beautifully. Um, the, the closers are set pretty well from the factory and uh, I had no issues at all, no problems at all. So I definitely recommend the door. The installation, like I say, was, was great. It comes with a full glass in it, a full view glass. It's also got a full screen in it or that comes with it where you just pop out the retainers, take out the glass, put in the screen and pop the retainers back in. I guess I like that because it'd be nice to put a screen in there. The, uh, the downside is that um, you have to store the screens. So thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. Uh, please give me a like if you would down below, hitting the thumbs up button. And uh, hope you check out some of my other videos and hope to see you back soon. Thank you very much and God bless.